Hello and welcome. Been a while since my last video and I've got something completely different for you. This is my very own design 250 class FPV tricopter. I'm calling it the Redback. The Aussies will understand. Uh, the rest of you, well, it's a very nasty little spider with a very bright red back or stripe on the back. Anyway, this is my Redback tricopter. I'm going to do another video later on about some of the design features and stuff, but this video is all about how to build one. When you buy your kit, you will get two arms, two legs, a front section, a tail section for the top plate, and a pre-assembled uh, pivot mech for the um, tricopter to actually work. Okay, and a bunch of hardware. So everything required to assemble it, uh, you get. You'll have to supply your own flight controller, ESCs, motor, and a servo. And I'll get to the servo as I get to that part of the build. So, how do we put this together? Okay, first of all, I'm going to ignore everything that's black and concentrate on the two red bits. Okay, you've got a tail section, you've got a front section, and they interlock together. Now, you can bolt and use nuts and bolts to hold them together, but I have found... Um, I get much better results gluing them together. To glue them together you're going to need some CA glue. Uh, this is mid-medium CA. Um, you can get it in thin, thick and medium. I like the medium. And what I do is I put start on this surface here at the tail. Do a bead along all three sections. Plenty on the sides at the section, a bit around the little center island, and a good bit on the flat surface. Okay, well, two together, a bit of masking tape, which I wrap that up really tightly with, and set it aside to dry. That's the top plate assembled. Next thing you're going to want to do just grab your front arms and your legs. Now the legs have a flat side with two holes in them or a rounded edge. Okay. The motor arm has a top and a bottom. In the bottom of the motor arm there's a recess that the leg fits very snugly into. You know you got it right because it'll sit square. Okay. And in your kit, you'll have two 12mm M2 screws, and they just screw in from the top. And hold the legs on. Now, the initial arms I actually printed with the legs attached, but I found that the most likely bit of damage in a in a bit of a rough landing is to crack the legs and um, I've had some success re-gluing them but in the end I just gave up and decided it was just as easy to make the legs completely replaceable so every part is available separately um, at reasonable prices and because I'm producing them myself uh, there's no oh dear I'm out of stock of legs you'll have to wait for them to turn up from China Okay, so you need to assemble two legs. Two I have done previously. Cool, they're ready to go. That's done. Okay. The tail itself will come pre-assembled, as is here. So you've got the motor mount, the alloy boom, there's a, a, a collar at the front here, um, which controls the pivot, and there's a locking collar at the back. And they have grub screws through the two collars okay that hold it all together if you ever have to actually pull this apart um, the grub screws don't use loctite on them because they're going through plastic and if a screw goes through plastic and you use loctite on it it will actually crack the plastic use your ca instead of loctite if you ever find you need to pull these grub screws out okay again all the parts are available separately um, so if you're in a crash and you break the motor mount, well, you just have to do a motor mount. I will do a video later on on how to assemble this, but for the moment, you get these 
pre-assembled, so no need to worry. Okay, so grabbing my body back, which hasn't set yet, that's all right. Um, if you want to make it set faster, just a bit of CA accelerant and it sets instantly, but I find the bond is a bit stronger if you just let it go off naturally. So, next step, you want to fit the tail box as you get it into the main frame. Okay, and it will actually sit in there very tightly. Alright, and you need to fit this before you fit the servo. And you will get four 25mm M3 bolts. I found it better if you put them in from the bottom and grab your M3 nuts and sit them on top. Now, I'm just doing this as a dry assembly uh, for the sake of the video, but in the real world, you want to actually use a bit of Loctite on these bolts and nuts. Okay, so one two Now the reason the bolts go in from the bottom is there's not a lot of clearance between the holes and the servo frame at the back here, just in there. Um, so the nuts tend to be just a little bit too wide for that little bit of space you got there. You could do the front bolts the other way up. Um, I think I actually did on uh, my prototype version at one stage. But it's just as easy to do all four from the bottom. The bolts are exactly the right length so that they will sit flush with the tops of the nuts so you don't get any nasty bits of bolts sticking out the top or anything like that. So it actually comes up as a nice neat fit. Okay, so there's the tail attached to the top plate. Okay. Okay, now you can fit the arms now if you want, but what I found it is easier is if you fit the servo at this point in time, just without the arms on. Okay, so this is a Spectrum A330 uh, mini servo. It's the one I recommend for the kit. Um, it's a Spectrum servo. You can buy them globally. Um, there's backup globally. You can buy gear sets for them, all that sort of stuff. Okay, you can get cheaper servos, but I found with cheaper servos I was getting reliability issues, and also I found with a lot of the cheaper servos I was getting electrical noise interfering with the flight controller, uh, causing jitters in flight and stuff like that. So um, I went through about ooh 100 bucks worth of cheap servos before I decided to buy a $30 servo that I knew would work. So you can play with the cheaper ones if you want, but all the mounts and everything and everything are all done ready for the A330. Now before you fit the servo, one thing you need to do is get the horn on properly. Now this horn, the horn you need to use, this was actually a four-way horn. And these, the distance between this hole you need to use and the center is 13 millimeters. All right. And the other thing you need to do is what they call 90 degree, the, horn, the servo. So I use a servo tester and a battery to power up the servo and set it to the center position and you want the horn to run as I've got it there as straight as possible down the center of the servo. You might have to move the horn around a couple of times um, and try a few different directions to get one that sits close to straight on. If it's a little bit off, doesn't matter, but it's close to dead straight down the body is where you want that horn setting when you're in a neutral position. If you don't have a servo tester, you can use your radio and plug into a receiver and just with the a channel centered on your radio will give you your, that's the position you want to get that straight in when the radio is at center okay and again horns running back across the body you can see there and you want the 13 mil hole now what I've done here is I have taken my M2 screw and I've actually cut the thread into the end of that into that 13 mil hole using the M2 screw before I fitted it to the servo. It just makes it a little easier the next step. 
All right, okay. So, servo sits over these two um, sections here, and they've got holes in them ready for the mounting screws. So the servo sits over that. So the center spline of the servo is in line with the rear boom. Okay. And I'm just using the little self-tapping screws that come with the servo. As I said, the screw holes are already there. And the two screws just screw in to hold the servo in place. Okay, cool. Servo's fitted. Last thing you need to do is to attach this control arm to the servo horn. Okay? Now in the kit you get two of these little tiny um, spaces, little plastic spaces, and a 8mm M2 screw. Now, these two spaces are different. One is thicker than the other. Okay, so what you want to do is, look at the two, grab the thinner one. Put the screw through that so that the larger surface, the head of the screw is against the larger surface. Okay, so your little flange effectively. That goes through a little bit. That goes through the end of the servo arm, the thicker one with the larger diameter piece away from the control arm fits on. So effectively you've got um, a little bush in the center of that arm and that then screws onto that hole of pre-threaded in my servo horn. Now, if you want that to be extra secure, you can put a nut on the back of it, but I've found I haven't needed it. But, you know, every 20 or 30 flights, you might want to just grab an M2 and make sure those two screws are still snugged up. And that is the servo control for the tail done. Final step to assemble your frame is to fit your two arms, which you've already put the legs on. Okay, now they fit into slots in the front here, very snugly, one and two. Okay, you then have some M3 by 12 screws, six and all, that go through these holes in the front of the frame. start with just the inner two just to hold it all in place and the screws are just a tiny bit the, the holes are just a little undersized slightly so these screws will actually screw in and bite down so you can actually pre-assemble it to a certain extent without having to worry about the nuts on the back but do fit the nuts again if I was doing this for real I would lock tight these nuts on so the nut goes onto the back of that bolt and we tighten up accordingly and you do all six bolts in the front arms the same okay I won't bother for, the, for this video doing the other bolts but you would do, I do recommend you do all six bolts, three per arm. Okay, with the nuts underneath, tiny bit of Loctite on the end so that the nuts won't come undone. And that's the frame assembled. There's really not much to build in the frame at all. Quite a simple build. Now, some of you might be sitting there going, but I don't like tricopters. Well, there's also a red back quadcopter. Builds exactly the same way, except you've got a center joiner section which simply bolts together with eight screws. You could glue it together if you wanted to, or the kit will come with the bolts, so you can actually pull it apart if you like. But there we go, there's the Redback Quadcopter. For those of you who are a bit skeptical about your tries, but if you haven't flown a tricopter ever, you're missing out. I'll come back in a little while and I'll do the electronic fit off with a finished one. See you soon.